Hello, my name is Matteo. I make games and I teach people how to get started with game making. In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly that, how to make your first video game. Do you start by reading a game design book, by playing a lot of games, by learning to code? Well, let's consider another skill that you've learned as a young person, such as speaking. How did you learn to speak? Probably your younger self started by copying adults and people around you, by mashing up what they were saying, by observing the reaction you were saying, and through that process you learned a lot. And likewise, if you want to learn how to make games, I would propose this approach. Start by copying and mashing up existing games. In other words, by hacking games, old games into new games. Hacking, that's a word that has received quite a lot of back press. But we could look at it as taking a game apart and then putting it back together. And in the process, you will introduce some small or big changes which will turn into something quite different from what you started from. Now, game designers have spent quite a bit of thinking into defining what games are and how we can analyze them and design them. And one way to do it is by looking at their mechanics, dynamics and aesthetics. Mechanics are the rules of the game, the laws and constraints under which the game operates. They determine how the game is set up, what actions players can take, what effect those actions have on the game, and when does the game end and how a resolution is determined. For example, let's consider chess. What are the mechanics of chess? Well, they are the size and layout of the board, the pieces that you put on the board, the different actions that those pieces can make, the fact that you can move only one piece per turn, and of course, the check rule. So if your king is under check, you have to, by a rule, protect it or move it somewhere else. In reallybadchess.com, everything is just like chess, except that you get a random combination of pieces at the beginning of each game. So you may start with a lot of queens, very powerful army, or you, can, you may get a lot of pawns that don't give you much. And I think this is a brilliant hack of chess because just by changing one mechanic, you turn the game upside down. Let's talk about dynamics. Once you set the mechanics of a game in motion, dynamics are what players tend to do in order to reach their game goal. So the behaviors, the strategies, the tactics that they put in place in order to win the game and also how people interact with each other when playing a game. Those are the dynamics. What are the dynamics of chess, for instance? If you play classic chess, then you probably start your game with a pawn and then shift your focus onto more powerful pieces as the game progresses. And there isn't a rule that forces you to do that, so it's not a mechanic. It's a dynamic because it's something that you've learned you can do to improve your chances of winning that game. It's a better strategy. If you play really bad chess, then that dynamic doesn't really exist because you may not have a pawn or you may have a better move to do at that point. Okay, and what are the aesthetics? Well, aesthetics in the MDA sense do not refer to the visual aspects of a game, but rather to the experience, to the feelings. What do people feel while they're playing a game? So, is the game fun? What kinds of fun are people having? Is the gameplay intellectually or emotionally engaging? Is the gameplay fast and frenzied or slow and strategic? Those are the aesthetics. Let's consider chess again. What are the aesthetics of chess? In classic chess, you play the role of a medieval commander trying to outsmart your opponent in an open war between two armies. There is no randomness in chess. All the information is out there, and because of that, games of chess tend to be very silent and strategic. People spend most of their time looking at the board and strategizing, not saying anything. That's the aesthetics of chess. What do you think are the aesthetics of really bad chess? 
Well, got to try and find out for yourself. The key point about MDA is that mechanics shape dynamics, which in turn shape aesthetics. So if you want to affect how people experience the game, you need to work on the mechanics. You cannot directly manipulate the player experience, like you cannot directly design the aesthetics. And also it doesn't really work to just ask people to behave differently without having any mechanic in place which will encourage them to do it. For example, what do you think would happen if you just ask people to be nice to each other while playing chess? That is, if you try to change the dynamics of chess without putting any mechanics in place that foster that behaviour. Well, you should try for yourself if you don't believe me. Okay, enough talking. Pick a board game, one that you own or one that you can borrow from a friend or from the library. What I'd like you to do is learn how to play it and then play it with a critical eye. Ideally, play with other humans. And after you played it, use the form linked below to discuss and note down your observations on the mechanics, dynamics and aesthetics of the game that you played. In particular, consider what's weird or interesting or broken about the mechanics. What kind of behaviours those mechanics foster? And what's the play experience? So are, are people having fun? Did you have fun? How did you feel while playing? Now, please pause the video. I'll be freezing for about half an hour. Now it's time to hack the game that you played and analyzed. How? However you want. But remember that hacking the game mechanics will guarantee the best results. You can prototype your hack with cards and any kind of colored objects that are lying around your house. Anything that works to bring your idea to life. And also, make sure that you write down some rules so that you don't forget them. Now, it's time for you to freeze me again. Please be quick. I'll be back in half an hour. So, what have you done? The truth is, you won't have a clue whether your game works or not until you play test it with some people. Even the most experienced game designers will tell you that. So, let's play test our game, shall we? A couple of tips. One, record everything, or well, as much as possible. What I found works really well is to put your phone in the middle of the table ask permissions first, and then let it audio record the whole playtest session. Players will quickly forget that you're capturing everything they're saying. And after the session, you'll be able to listen to it again and capture moments of boredom or confusion or excitement, and that will really help improve your game. Two, give people roles, not rules because players are heavily involved in the process of shaping your game. So the earlier in the process, the more imagination you'll have to put into it. Good news is that people are great at role playing. When I test my game about bees, I usually tell players something like this. You are a ruthless business person and nobody and nothing will stop you from making honey. And then I tell them what they can do. I do not tell them what they cannot do because they will discover that by themselves. So whatever you're testing, it's really important that you spend some time setting the scene and then let players get into character and play with what you give them. Three, talk about problems, not solutions. So often players will tell you what they think is wrong with your game, but actually their diagnosis of the problem is wrong. So try to steer the conversation away from diagnosing what's wrong with the game and keep it at the symptoms level. So you want to ask players about their experience of playing the game, not about their solutions. Okay, your turn now. Find some people to test your game with and do it. I prepared two handy forms for you to use while you play test. Two handy forms, told you. 
this is important. I'm going back into hibernation now. Please pause the video and I'll see you next spring. Oh, hello. How did it go? If you found that your game is a little bit broken or not quite fun yet, don't worry. The process of making games is iterative, which is a fancy term for something that you do over and over and over and over again. Each time you test something, you spot things that you can improve or things that you can fix. So your game will evolve over time. But hey, however your test went, you just made a game! Possibly the first one of many games to come. So thank you for bringing your ideas into the world. We need more games. Now, if you fancy making a video game, join me for the next part.